everyone, and thank you for coming to the Limbrook Chamber of Commerce Installation and Awards Presentation Dinner. My name is Denise Rogers, and I'm the manager at Astoria Federal Savings Bank here in Limbrook. It's an honor to be surrounded by so many important individuals who make this village a great place to be. As a resident and current worker here in Limbrook, it gives me great pleasure for us to gather here at St. Mary's Bank of Columbus. These types of events are never easy to coordinate, and therefore, I'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to Carol Burak, Bill Gaylor, Esther John, Stephen and Deirdre Wangel, Stu Neufeld, and Nancy Friedman. I would also like to acknowledge and thank Long Island American Water for their main sponsorship, for James from Stephen's Forest, for the creation of the beautiful centerpieces found at each of your beautiful at each of your tables, the KFC for the use of their room, and Joe Caruso from Vincent's Restaurant for their catering. You'll also see on your tables our program showing the raffle prizes that were kindly donated by some of our local businesses. Thank you, each of them, for the generous donations. Now I'd like to begin by introducing Reverend John Faye, John Faye, pastor of St. James Methodist Church for our invocation. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for you provide us with all the good things of life. We thank you for your many blessings, especially as we gather this evening as the Limbrook Chamber of Commerce to honor some outstanding citizens of our community, to celebrate another year of service to our village and business community, and to install our offices for the ensuing year. We ask your blessing upon all whom we will honor and install this evening, and to bless all of our endeavors for good. Help us to prosper our village, that Limbrook may continue to grow and be a place of joy, prosperity, and peace for all our residents, as well as a shining example to those who live and work around us. All these things we ask in your great and sacred name. Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to introduce Rabbi Glenn Jacob from Temple um, Ahad for an additional blessing. Reverend Fahey has been a great friend since I've arrived in the village. And I always, always get stuck going after me. <laughs> One day, one day, John, I will go first. <laughs> Not so chosen tonight. Remind me. I come tonight with the lesson and the blessing over the food. So the lesson I give you tonight, oh, I hope it doesn't bring back too much of your day job. But in the coming week from my tradition is the reading from Exodus chapters 25 through 27, one of those exciting sets of chapters. It's called Titzavah in the Hebrew. And in these chapters, which are extraordinarily boring, <laughs> there is written a very detailed list of how to build a tent in the middle of the desert. And with this detailed list appears to be a set of codes that have to be followed. And a set of regulations that must be done to the letter. In fact, you want to know that if you want to erect a tent of any size in the desert, it has to have not 40, not 44, 46 points of strength that connect it to the land outside to keep it upright. And all the connections have to be of silver. Now, for those of you who might have to deal with the regulations in your own businesses, and the rules, and the zoning codes, and all the other stuff, it's nothing new in the world. As a matter of fact, you can say that all the regulations that you and I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, they're as old as the Bible. 
And that's the truth of this week's portion. So, my friends, as you gather tonight to celebrate, after a long day's work, of which again tomorrow you will get up and do again. I wish upon you and your loved ones the joy and celebration that is life in our little village. I wish you goodness for the year to come. May the blessings that we all seek be upon you. And may the blessings that you seek for yourself, may you share them as well with all of your loved ones, friends, and acquaintances. Let us bless this meal. And I will do it first in my traditional, which is in the Hebrew, then I'll translate it into modern English for you. After which, we all get to eat. Baruch atah anay lehem melech ha'olam ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Thank you. Now I feel better. Translation, I believe in God who brings forth bread from the earth. And a blessing over this event. Baruch atah anay lehem melech ha'olam she'achiyano v'kiyamano v'higiyano v'azman hazeh. I believe in God who created us, who sustained us, and brought us to this joyous occasion. Amen. Amen. And as we say in Hebrew, Pateavon, which is Hebrew for Bon Appetit. <laughs> Executive Vice President and tonight's dinner chair. And I thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. Before we, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's so exciting to see all the important people in Limbrook gathered in one place for the installation of the Chamber of Commerce officials, but more importantly, to pay tribute to four great, dedicated community leaders. <laughs> As Denise mentioned, my name is Bill Gaylor. I, I uh, own the home off store in Atlantic Avenue with Lily, my wife of uh, 50 years. And, uh, that's pretty nice. I don't know how she put up with it for that long. Uh, I want to take a moment to speak to you about the Chamber uh, of Commerce and what I think it means to the village of Limbrook. As members of the Chamber of Commerce, we consider ourselves a vital part of Limbrook and are committed to improving the wonderful sense of community we all share. I believe we, in our organization, are one of the village's most important organizations. Why? Because our membership includes representatives from the fire department, police department, the Limburg School District, and virtually all of the community organizations in town. Our members include all the important and leading businesses in our community. And our members donate tens of thousands of dollars annually to support all the community organizations and the churches and temples in this community and their programs. The Chamber of Commerce has no political agenda. However, we do communicate our program of work to our public officials 
And our belief, I believe our relationship with our government leaders is exceptional. In addition to our commitment to our community, we are extremely dedicated to improving our members' businesses. We also serve our members by providing seminars which educate and help our members and do a more effective job in running their businesses. Our meetings and seminars are also great opportunities for members to network, which helps them succeed and grow their businesses. We strive to work hand in hand with all community leaders to maintain a healthy, vibrant economic and social environment for our residents. Our mission as the Chamber is the same as all other organizations within the Village of Limburg. And that is to make Limburg a great place to live, work, and play. We encourage all our residents to shop and do business locally. I believe we deserve that support. At this point, I thank you very much. I would like to turn the uh, program back to Denise. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a, uh, we will have our dinner if Denise is finished, and then we'll do our program of installing the officers. Denise. Um, I'd like to continue to introduce now um, Stephen Wangle. He's owner of the Kitchen Law and Vice President of Membership. I'd like to say a few words. I'd like to take a second, I'd like everybody just to look around the room for a second. What we have assembled here is a real community. We have citizenry, we have the finest of Lindbrook's business organizations, we have our dignified officials, and four very special people in this room that we're honoring tonight, who really are an exemplary example of what it's like to devote yourself to the community. Let's give them a round of applause. Having said that, I'm Steve Wangle. I'm owner of the Kitchen Loft. And I'm about to assume the position of Vice President of Membership. In this position, it's not only my responsibility to grow the membership of the Limbrook Chamber, but to ensure that the residents are aware of all the goods and services that are available to them locally and conveniently. I will continue to cultivate new programs to enhance the value of Chamber membership. These programs are intended to promote member businesses, increase store traffic and profitability for our membership. Shop local isn't a catchphrase to me. It's our lifeblood. I'm also happy to introduce the newest members of our business community, CPA Realty, FNL Deli and Catering. Hold your applause to the end, please. Decorating Den Interiors, Raptor Rotisserie and Grill, Swirl Frozen Yogurt, Corporate Advertising Specialties, and the Sweet Peas Bake Shop. More information on these and all our members are available at our website, lindbrookusa.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for our ongoing Chamber Dollars Contest to win gift certificates to all our local merchants. Thanks, enjoy your dinner, everybody have a great night. get myself uh, installed as the president and won't let me continue. So without further ado, for the installation of the president, I would like to ask our Nassau County Legislator, Fran Becker, who's a dear personal friend of mine and a great community leader, to come forward and install me as president for a another time. Good evening, everyone. It's always a, it's such a great pleasure to be with, with your friends and, and your family right here in Limbrook, where I grew up as a kid. And I feel so blessed at this time in my life to be uh, representing this great and wonderful village. And uh, I also have to say that this, this Chamber of Commerce, I mean, uh, you know, my colleague Tony Santino will tell you that uh, 
the government that is, they, they will tell you that as we travel to the county and, and visit other communities, the Liberal Chamber of Commerce is one of the very, very best. And, and please give them and each of yourselves a round of applause. This chamber is so, so very special in so many ways. And, and what they do for the various organizations in the community and, and they, how they are so very, very actively involved in, in, uh, in, in with the village government, which is so, so important. And uh, if anybody's watching at home and this is uh, televised in some way, please shop locally, forget the internet. <laughs> These are the people who support us. These are the people who fill our stores and, and help pay taxes and, and uh, share the burden with homeowners in this village. I also just wanted to add that, uh, Bill, you're an amazing person. Uh, you've always so, been so active in, in, in Limburg, USA. You're, you're as the president of this organization, you keep it humming and growing, which is so very important. It was nice to see that uh, we have five and six and seven new members. Uh, in order for this organization to be successful and for the village to be successful, uh, we need the organization to continue to grow, and it is under your, uh, under your leadership. Uh, Bill, you've been a, a great friend of mine many, many years, as, as you know. We actually support each other in, in the community. We do shop locally, don't we, Bill? Yes, you do. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, in any case, uh, it's just a great privilege. I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, install you as president of the Limerick Chamber of Commerce uh, in Limerick, USA, one of the greatest villages, not only here on Long Island, but in the entire country. So, here we go. Solomon promise and swear. Solomon promise and swear. To uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. To uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws of the State of New York. The Constitution and laws of the State of New York. The ordinances of the village of the Limbrick, of Limbrick USA. The ordinances of the village of Limbrick, USA. And the bylaws of the Limbrick Chamber of Commerce of Limbrick, USA. And the bylaws of the Limbrick Chamber of Commerce of Limbrick, USA. USA. And I further promise to swear. No, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I further promise to swear. I further promise to swear. To discharge the offices, the office of president. To discharge the office of president of the Limerick Chamber of Commerce. The Limerick Chamber of Commerce. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. And I further promise to swear. <laughs> To give Fran Becker a discount. <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> give Fran Becker a discount. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. Fran is really a very special human being. He's a dear personal friend of mine. And I'm honored that he installed me as the uh, president of the chamber. He's not only our Nassau County legislator, but Fran is a certified financial planner and an insurance broker who does a uh, wonderful job, and he does it for me, so I, I can attest to that. Okay, at this point, I guess I'm, I'm stuck for another term, uh, but I'm honored, honored, and it's my distinct honor and pleasure to serve as president of this chamber of commerce. I, I really love it, and I love the, the officers and directors will talk more about that. May I, uh, be, now before I ask our mayor to come forward, I'd like to say a few words about the change of officers and directors. Our board of directors, members and officers are all dedicated and committed leaders, full of community spirit, who give so unselfishly of their time and effort and money to serve the chamber and our community. They receive no compensation, and I respect them so very much for all that they do. I want everybody to know how much they are appreciated. I would like the officers and directors to please stand in your seats. And let us all thank them for their dedication. Would you please stand? Okay, I thank every, I thank you, officers and directors, for your commitment. At this point, I would like to now ask 
our Mayor Bill Hendrick to come forward and install the officers. I have known Bill ever since he became an elected official in this village. And he's always cooperated the chamber, with the chamber as we work together on various projects. A great guy and our friend, Mayor Bill Hendrick. I would like to call the following officers up for installation. For Executive Vice President, would you like to do that? Oh, sure. I would like that. Executive Vice President Denise Rogers from Astoria Federal Savings. Sarish Mohil, ABV DeMar CPA. Secretary Carol Burak. Secretary of Services and just a great person. Uh, Vice President of Membership, Stephen Michael, the Kitchen Law. Vice President of Special Events, Kathleen Johansson, the Atheist Anglewood. Vice President Joseph Carasone, Vincent's Pizzeria and Restaurant. Stu Rufeld, Miller's Hardware and, uh, and Housewares. Vice President of Governmental Affairs, Jeffrey Greenfield, NGL Realty Insurance Group. Vice President of Public Relations, Rhonda Bliff with Wilson Communication. Council to the Chamber, C. William Gaylor III, Gaylor and Walmart Attorney. Just let me take a moment to say that this is a wonderful party for the Chamber. This shows intermingling of, of, of businesses of all sorts, of our fire department, uh, uh, of our police department, of the village, the, the village uh, uh, employees, the chamber employees, and, and I, I can tell you right now that, that Fran Becker, uh, our, our, uh, uh, our uh, a legislator and Tony Santino, our, our, our senior councilman, would agree that in a time when you have to worry about ec the, ec uh, the economy, uh, jobs, and taxes, this is what goes together. That we watch that our economy, it's, it's on a local level, that we keep our storefronts full. That's the local level economy. Jobs, jobs will come from the local level when you keep those storefronts full. And of course, while they are full, there's sales taxes, and there's also stores that pay taxes and help defray that of, of the people who live here. So if you really look at the Chamber of Commerce, they are all linked to jobs, economy, and taxes. And I think we owe them a round of applause for keeping doing their job. Raise your hands. Use your own names. Don't use anybody else's name. I repeat your name. I do solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The laws, rules, and bylaws of the Limbrook Chamber of Commerce. In my duties as director, in my duties as director to the best of my abilities, to the best of my abilities. so help me God. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Bill. We look forward to working with you as we go forward. We've got some challenging things to work on together. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Behold the offices. How great they are. At this point, I would like to call our senior councilman, Anthony Santino, from the town of Hempstead. Please come forward and install the directors of the chamber. Councilman Santino is a great friend. He's always there to assist us with anything we need. He's a personal friend of mine, uh, and it's my honor and pleasure to introduce 
Councilman Anthony Santino, the senior councilman of the Council. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for uh, the great honor to uh, install your directors this evening. Uh, it's been said a couple of times before tonight, but I think it needs. Uh, I think it needs repeating that small business is the heart and soul of any community, uh, particularly in these very tough economic times. Uh, small business is the is the engine that keeps the community moving. More jobs are created by small business than by all the Fortune 500 companies combined. That is an absolute fact. And that is something that we always have to remember as, certainly as government officials, and I know that Fran and the mayor and, uh, and uh, Assemblyman Brian Curran and all of those who, uh, who work in government at every level understand just how incredibly important small business is. But as local consumers, uh, we have to always remember that if it's available locally, we should buy it locally. Yeah. If it's, uh, because those small, those small businessmen and women are the people who support our community. They keep our downtowns vibrant. Uh, when the uh, local little league or the uh, one of the local churches or synagogues uh, is uh, running a fundraiser, it's small business that they turn to, and small business is always there to answer the call. So. Uh, it's, a, it's an important relationship, it's a two-way street, and we always have to remember that, that small business really is uh, the heart and soul of the community, and if small business prospers, a community prospers. So my hat off to you, because in the most incredible, incredibly difficult times that we live in, the worst recession since the Great Depression, uh, Limbrook is vibrant, Limbrook is strong, Limbrook is not only holding on, uh, Limbrook is growing. Limbrook is advancing forward. And that's a testament to you, the small businessmen and women who work seven days a week, who never get a day off, who are always there uh, making sure that, that tomorrow is a, is a better day. So uh, give yourselves a round of applause for all that you do. Now, uh, now, it is my honor to install the director, so I'm going to call the names and if you can come forward. Uh, Bill Albergo from Home Video Editing. Chris Anderson from Crown Ford. Bill Dybold from the PBA. Cy Enten, Freeway Services. Nancy Friedman from Richland Communications. Yeah. Eleanor Jobagi from Persempra Ladies Live, one of the sons of Indian America. Okay. The ever present Joe LaRocca. Joe, where are you? Yeah. Charles Mayoni, Mayoni Realty, Howard Reese, the president of the Red Motor Community. Okay, uh, it says here consultant, Harry Team Corporation. I'm not exactly sure. That's Harry. Okay, that's Harry. Okay, there you go. Oh, that, oh that's the one that skipped over. I get it. Bill Roth, William Roth, America Road Collision. <laughs> Linda Stevenson, Investment Federal. Of course, Holly Talbot, Holly from Alacart Culinary Services, Esther Jolin from Moments, Memories, and Traditions, and uh, that's it. Okay, so, if you would, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the local laws and ordinances of the incorporated village of Limburg, as well as the Constitution and Bylaws of the Limburg Chamber of Commerce. And I do further swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of director of the Limburg Chamber of Commerce to the best of my ability. So help me God. Now let's get on to the main event, honoring four great community leaders. I would like, to, for the first award, I would like to ask Alice Marie Brosnahan 
and her family come forward to receive the award. Helping me with the presentation is our superintendent of schools, Dr. Santo Barbarino, and the president of the school board, Catherine Avandu. Please come forward. stands the possibility of being informed or having the benefit of her input, Alice Marie Bresnahan is the first to volunteer. Sometimes she has the responsibility of actually coordinating those work groups. There is obviously a wonderful relationship between our Chamber of Commerce and Limburg Public Schools. We appreciate each other and help to support one another. Therefore, recognizing an individual who has been a member of the Limbrook Board of Education since 1975, did we get the year right? 36 years of service must be considered a most fitting tribute. Now we talk about service, but Alice Marie's brand of service should really be called active duty. She's a non-stop machine. As a member of the Board of Education, she attends, as expected, the regularly scheduled meetings, which are many in any given year. However, however, she also attends, and this is the truth, she also attends every concert and every play and every special event in every school in this district. This is not the norm. In addition, we could be at a football game or a basketball game, and if we look up, there she is, always with her wonderful husband, whom I refer to as St. John. <laughs> Where are you, John? There you are, okay. I thought John, you were still in family. You will find them in the stands, cheering on the green and gold Limburg Owls. A most familiar face, Alice Marie is not only recognized in the Limburg community, but throughout Long Island, New York State, and even in Washington, D.C. She served as president of the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association and has been a longtime member of the executive committee. She has presided at convention workshops at the New York State School Boards Association conference each year, and she will be going in just a few days, where she does every year, to Washington to lobby on behalf of public education, serving as a liaison to the office of Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy. Alice Marie probably has the longest list of awards, including the New York State Masters in Boardsmanship, the Silver Bullet Award, the Scope Award for Excellence in School Board Service, Limbrook Citizen of the Year, Limbrook's Woman of the Year, National Honorary Life Member from Limbrook Council PTAs, and Haas University's Phi Delta Kappa Educator of the Year. But perhaps her greatest achievement, for which there is no plaque, is the fact that Alice Marie is a proud mother of nine children, all of whom were educated in the Limbrook school system. On behalf of everyone here this evening, Alice Marie, Dr. B and I are so proud to be the ones to have the opportunity to present you with the Limbrook Chamber of Commerce Award. So much 
for the children of Limburg. Uh, most particularly, I guess, your pre-prom party that you host every year in the village, which has really become a wonderful event for our kids, a real happening. Oh my goodness. To be honored for something that I love to do is really special. And I'm very grateful. This is even more special because I'm being honored with, so, with other people who have done so much for this community, but most particularly, Joe LaRocca, who I think is really a Olympic treasure. And it's wonderful he's been here. I'd like to thank my colleagues who are here, Catherine, our board president, Catherine Cavendrew, Bill Kayan, Sean Strife, and our administrators, administrators Dr. Barbarino, uh, Denise Nystrom, and Melissa Buell. And I just thank all of you and my family who are here. My son Donald and his, his family, Emily, his wife, and his three sons, Tyler, Jay, and Colin, and my daughter Jennifer, and her two little girls, Noah and Enan, and my husband Joe, who really should be on it, not me. <laughs> We're putting up with this. So I just thank you so much. I am really honored. will be Carol Burak, Secretary and Administrative Assistant of the Chamber of Commerce. Carol, please come forward and help make this presentation to our dear, beloved Joe Larocca. He was a wrestler and a runner-up in Nassau County in the 150-pound division. He was also a varsity football player in 1936. After high school, his first position was as a mortgage teller at People's National Bank of Lindbrook, which has since been renamed the Bank of America. Joe entered the United States Army on February 10, 1942 and that included a stint overseas. He received an honorable discharge in October 1945. He attended evening classes at Hofstra University and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in accounting. He served a three-year apprenticeship under the Certified Public Accountant Organization in 1948. He then began his self-employed accounting practice in Liberal and licensed in the state of New York. Joe has been married to the ever-patient Alberta for 60 years. And this union has produced three beautiful daughters, 
Mary, Janine, and Carol. And their unions have produced six grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Joe has been a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars since 1945 and was their first junior vice commander. He served as the Limbrook Community Finance Chairman for the Boy Scouts beginning in 1955. He was treasurer of the incorporated village of Limbrook for 17 years and treasurer of the Limbrook School District for 18 years. For his church affiliation, his credits can be identified as total commitment. Joe was treasurer for the 25th anniversary dedication of Our Lady of Peace. He served as president of the Holy Name Society since 1965, participating in all phases of the society, including the installation and completion of a bell for Our Lady, which still rings proudly to this day and the Grotto for Our Lady, which can be seen at the crossroads of Merrick Road and Peninsula Boulevard. Joe served on the pastoral council and school boards of OLP for many years. He is a Eucharistic minister, a lector, and an altar server. He was a pioneer in the efforts of fundraising for Our Lady of Peace, as he helped raise considerable sums of money to defray a $150,000 parish debt. Joe participated in organizing the Limbrook Youth Athletic Association and was its first treasurer. He is a past treasurer of the Catholic Accountants Guild of the Diocese of Rockville Center. He was chairman of the Long Island Council of Churches and ran a drive entitled Alert for Hunger. He is past chairman of the Rotary Club. He is a member of the Limbrook Elks Lodge and St. Mary's Knights of Columbus. When Our Lady of Peace instituted its youth program, Joe, at the age of 75 years, joined the group, not to shoot hoops, although he probably could have, but to offer his expertise in helping the young people to build their treasury. Joe served, a chairman, served as chairman and trustee of the Timothy Spellman Fund in 1975. Timothy was a limbo boy afflicted with cerebral palsy. And finally, Joseph Morocco has served and still serves on the board of directors of the Limbrook Chamber of Commerce for over 50 years. Wow. Offering his suggestions and wisdom to help build a better community for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no ordinary job. Uh, my friend, I am deeply honored and privileged to have worked with you over these past 40 years. Folks, please rise for Mr. Joseph Lerato. from the heart of the entire chamber and the members. Liberal Chamber of Commerce proudly recognizes Joseph Larocco, 2011. Dedication, commitment, loyalty to serving the village of Limbrook and the Chamber of Commerce for over 50 years. Congratulations.
We all love Brian. He was such a great mayor and did so much for the chamber. Brian, I wonder if he's worried about the snow. <laughs> You know what, and, and for some reason I was worried that I actually missed the part where Billy was making fun of me earlier in the night, so I'm glad I asked him up here. You know what, uh, first and foremost, uh, before, before I do anything, I want to congratulate Bill Gaylor on the president of this chamber. tremendous strides with regards to its business community and the downtown. And I have to tell you, village government played a role in it, but the driving force was the Chamber of Commerce led by Bill Gaylor, and you have done a fantastic job, Bill. And, and I hope you stay on for the next 20 years. <laughs> for no other reason than you have to deal with Billy for the next 40 years. <laughs> Also, I want to congratulate the other honorees. Let me, real quickly, uh, congratulate Chief Burke, who I don't think anybody in this room knows or appreciates how hard Chief Burke worked in the last year. Every single call, regardless of whether it was noontime, 12 midnight, or 3 o'clock in the morning, that man made it to the calls, and he led, he led in my opinion, the best fire department here in Nassau County. So thank you, Chief Burke. I want to congratulate Joe Rocco, who, you know what, I think Alice Marie actually summed it up the best. He is and will always be just a member of treasure. So Joe, congratulations. <laughs> and then, of course, I, and I have to tell you, I don't know who in the chamber is the committee that selects people, but this year they did a fantastic job because one of my favorite people in this world is Alice Marie Bresnahan, who for the last more than 30 years has done more for and fought harder on behalf of the kids of this community than anybody that I know. Alice Marie. Uh, you know, Billy asked me to uh, present Mary Ann uh, with uh, this year's award, and I have to tell you, um, Mary Ann has been in village government for the better part of 28 years. Uh, she has served the village of Lindbrook as an assistant to five mayors and the boards of trustee over those 28 years. She has been married to Ken for many years, and that union has produced three wonderful children. She was originally hired by former mayor William Geyer more than 28 years ago, who Billy is here tonight. Thank you, Billy. It was your best decision for all of you. After Billy, uh, Mary Ann went on to serve former mayor Mary Holloway for four years, former mayor Eugene Scarpato for 12 years, or, uh, myself for three years and nine months, and the current mayor, William Hendrick, for the past and last long, long two months. <laughs> When hired, Mary Ann really had no idea what that job entailed. She shared joy, sorrow, births, and deaths, and we truly support one another here at Village Hall. She has enjoyed working with all the mayors, and that is according to her and the board members and the residents of this community. Her focus has always been to help the residents, and according to Mary Ann, you try to help them with their problems, resolve them, and let them know their government is working for them. I think it is important that they know that government is here to help them. Mary Ann will remain at Village Hall until the transition and training of her replacement is complete, which will end in the end of March. Which, I didn't write that because that's a lie. Me and Ken are trying to keep her in Village Hall permanently. And uh, she is putting up a little resistance, but I know that we want her there uh, even after March. Everybody that knows Mary Ann knows several things. One, the manner in which she conducts herself at Village Hall, professional, efficient, better than anybody that you know. Anybody that sees her at Village Hall knows how much she is cared for by every person that is down there. And you can tell that by the amount of Village employees who are here tonight. And thank you guys for coming, because they're a great bunch of people. And lastly, I just want to thank Mary.
here again just for really running the village in my four years. And by the looks of it, with Philly, she'll be running them for the next four years as well. <laughs> so Mary Ann, it is my distinct pleasure to congratulate you and to say that uh, if you choose not to take my advice and to leave, <laughs> you will be missed by everyone, especially me. Thank you very much. And I just asked Bill Gaylor's uh, permission. I have to let the mayor, Mayor Hendrick, just say a few words because Marianne is helping him out tremendously here. And I think it's appropriate that Mayor Hendrick says a few words. Ryan, the whole room forgives you for picking on me. And uh, that's really all I have to say. I want Marianne to stay as long as she wants. And uh, we have a lot of, some training to do and some catching up to do. And, uh, I hope uh, she uh, feels invigorated when she gets back from Ireland and decides to uh, stay on for a bit. Uh, again, for the rest of the room, please forgive him for picking on me, and I said it twice, so there you go. <laughs> for as long as I've been involved with the Chamber of Commerce as an officer and president, whenever I called the mayor's office, and needed any information. You can't believe how quickly she got back to me with perfect and accurate information, always making sure that the Chamber of Commerce was advised as to what is going on and making sure that if we had any requests, that it went to the mayor and the board. And I think she was always pushing to make sure that what we asked for, we got. And we love her very much. We're going to miss her. And this is a, a little plaque that we want her to have to re in our recognition of a wonderful human being and dedicated public servant, Mary Ann Hughes, for over 28 years. seen tremendous improvements and enhancements in our business district over the years as a result of the Chamber's work, and we are very fortunate to have such dedicated members who always have the best interest of them up in mind. I wish them well in all their future endeavors, and they're all to support our Chamber by shopping locally. I would like I'd like to thank the mayors who might have worked with over of these past 28 years for the never-ending support. My co-workers, past and present, who are truly my friends, and I would not be standing here today if it was not for the teamwork and support, and it is important to me that I share this with all my co-workers and mayors. I appreciate it. Lastly and most importantly, I thank my family, my husband Ken, my children, Brendan, Karen, and Tara, as I could not have worked these past 28 years without their support and encouragement. They have traveled this journey along with me. I also would like to thank my siblings who uh, are here tonight, my sister and her husband, my brother Brian, my nephew, and Karen's girlfriend, who, by the way, just recently became a Limbrook guy. She just won house in Limbrook for being here tonight. Again, my sincere thanks and appreciation to all for this recognition, and I'm very thankful and proud that my family and I call them home. Thank you. 
So we have one more presentation. And we're ready. I'd like to call up my good friend, Raymond J. Burke, Chief of the Limerick Fire Department, to uh, come forward with his family to receive his award. member of Ho's company, where uh, Ray is uh, uh, a member and has been, and uh, we've gotten to know each other very well, and, he, and I'm very, very fascinated with the dedication of this gentleman. Ray, Chief Ray Burke has been a resident of Limerick for nearly 50 years. He attended Our Lady of Peace, is a graduate of Limerick High School, and shortly after graduating, he joined the uh, Limerick Fire Department. Ray has been married to his wife, Maria, for 34 years. Maria is an accountant with a local CPA firm. They raised two daughters, Tracy and Jackie, in their home on Lawrence Avenue. Tracy is currently captain of the medical company and is married to Captain Michael LaBarbera, is that correct? Thank Very you. Good. All right. Of the East Rockaway Fire Department. Jacqueline is a special education teacher working primarily with autistic students, and she works uh, for the New York City Board of Education. Now, Ray joined Lindbergh Coast Company on Lake Avenue in 1978, and was also a member of the Lindbergh Rescue Squad, having served as an advanced emergency medical technician for over 12 years. He was elected second lieutenant of Coast Company in 86, served two terms as captain from 88 to 90, and then again in 2004. He also served as the company secretary from 1998 to 2003. And he's been a trustee since 2005. Elected third assistant chief, 2007. He rose to the ranks and is currently serving with distinction as the chief engineer of the Limber Fire Department. Ray is also an accomplished musician. I have to tell you aside. I went to a host company Christmas party and I heard this most beautiful voice. Absolutely. <laughs> I have to look at him. <laughs> you would not believe that this man has the voice of an angel. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, listen, Ray is an accomplished musician and was the lead vocalist for the oldies cover band 45 RPM for over 20 years. He is involved with many other um, community activities and has also been a member of the Knights of Columbus since 1993. When Ray is not fighting fires, he can be found at Cablevision serving as a technical support representative. We thank Chief Ray Burke for his dedication and service, and for all the lives that he has saved in the line of duty. Hey, let's, let's really give this man a, a round of applause. so much for our village. Lindbergh Chamber of Commerce proudly recognizes Fire Chief Raymond Burke, 2011. Dedication, commitment, loyalty in serving the village of Lindbergh as Chief of the Lindbergh Fire Department, working hand in hand to build a better community. Thank you, Chief. Congratulations.
can't uh, thank President Gala enough for that introduction. It's so kind. Um, and I thank the Chamber. It's one thing to be acknowledged by a climatic organization, but when a community group like this takes the time to take notice of the contributions of uh, of the fire chief, I, 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 tr I truly am thankful for that and uh, appreciate so much the uh, awareness that the chamber has for the dedication of not just myself, but all the previous chiefs that I've had the pleasure of serving with, in particular Chief Ossipenti, Chief O'Reilly, and Chief Bean, the last three chiefs I served with, and of course my deputies who are without them, I can be nothing. Chief Hines, uh, Michael Hines, uh, over there in the green jacket, and Chief Carlo, and, and Chief Edward Hines, <laughs> You might know Zemo, he's got a bit of a profile. <laughs> and of course, without the support from my wife and my daughters and my new son in law. Uh, you know, home, home is, a, is also a bit of a teamwork event uh, between the, uh, the the normal routine that everybody has to do and, and of course with my activities as the fire department there is quite a bit less time for that and a lot of that falls to my wife and my daughters and I want to thank them for all that they've done for me to allow me to, to serve the village in the, in the manner I have. Um, lastly, uh, I, when I joined as a teenager, uh, the fire department uh, some 30 years ago. Um, it, we would, all of us as new guys that were listening, and I'm sure most of those deputies and ex-chiefs that, that I've served with, uh, would listen to the radio and, and envision and, and think of ourselves someday that we might be the chief of the department. And we would hear the, uh, the chief go, you know, 429, which is the call sign for the chief of the department. 429 responding. And, I'm sure many of them rehearsed that in their cars and in, and in their uh, dreams over the years, and I know I did. And I, I have to tell you, even to this minute, the favorite part of my job is when I'm responding to a call, and I say 429 is fine. Thanks so much. I appreciate everybody here.
we were, we were uh, sold back and forth to overseas and back, but I'm proud to announce that in 2008 we're part of the New York Stock Exchange publicly traded investment from the United States. Uh, it's just really an honor to be a part of this. And you're going to see a lot more of Long Island American water. We're going to keep investing in infrastructure in Limburg as well as the rest of our territory. And thanks, Marianne. She kept me out of trouble with the mayor, so i got to find somebody else. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joe Neve is was here, or is here, who's the chief of our department. Phil Healy, who's the head of the Department of Public Works. We thank him for his snow removal efforts. Of course, the school board was introduced before. We thank you for being here tonight and for your, your work so hard for the, the betterment of our, our school district. Peter Ledworth is sitting over in the corner. Melissa Bura is sitting over there. Now, this is what I was, I'm going to ask you a favor. If I overlooked or forgot anybody who is representing a body or an elected official or an appointed official, please stand up and say hello to us. Because if I forget you and you get upset with me, it's going to ruin my evening. Right? So, you know, so if there's anybody that's here, who did I not feel? Who? Carol Hanson. Oh, Carol Hanson, our administrator. I'm so thank you very much. Former Chief Gary Pazman. And former Senator uh, Brian Foley, who is here he is. <laughs> yeah, that was Suffolk County politics. I do believe Dad was John Foley, wasn't he? Dad. Yes, he was. Uh, a great, great elected official uh, in Suffolk County. Wonderful man. Can I forget anybody? Mr. Mr. Stephanakis. Again, from, from Steppens, thank you. He donated all the flowers. John Giordano, our village administrator. Village Trump, village everything. Did I forget anybody? Because if I did, I apologize. At this point, my part of the program is over. I would like to turn the program back to the very dynamic and wonderful executive vice president, Denise Rogers. <laughs>